up guys hi welcome welcome if you are new to our channel welcome my name is Aviera and this is our channel X and D life so if you're new please feel free to like comment and subscribe to our channel and any questions you may have please put those in those comments below I do read and comment to every single message that comes in so I'll be happy to have you join our team and get to know you guys so today's video is going to be called becoming a better wife in 2021 and I'm going to give like 10 tips to help suffice that because there's lots of things as um, women or a wife do that you know that we feel like we could be better at and there's a lot of little things that <laughs> sorry my baby's in the background there's a lot of little things that I do that I could work on to better help my marriage and help my husband feel the things that he needs to feel. Um, so the first thing I wanna go over is appreciate him and remember why I married him. And this applies to anybody, you know, appreciate your man and remember why you married him. Just those little things, it, it's such a good saying. So I feel like I need to appreciate him more. I feel like I don't give him enough of that appreciation that he needs sometimes. And I know it's because life happens and you know we get so consumed with family and kids that we don't sit down and say, hey, I appreciate you for you. And think back of why did I marry my husband? Oh, I married him because he was, you know, he was great. He was all of the above things. He was a godly man he's smart he's funny he's attractive I mean it's all those things that you know sometimes we tend to let slip off our minds throughout a marriage in anyone's marriage so it's just best to remember to appreciate you know him and make sure that he feels appreciated also so my second thing I have everything written on my notebook here so if you see me look down the second thing is be respectful of my hubs um, you know, there are times whenever, you know, you may have like a heated argument or something and you don't think, you know, your mind just goes there and sometimes you might blurt out how you're feeling, but you're doing it in the wrong circumstances. You're doing it in front of your kids or family or friends and not thinking like, oh my God, did I just embarrass him? And I'm, I'm world's worst, especially whenever I get really upset. I tend to speak what's on my mind at that given moment instead of taking a second to me and saying, hey, can we talk about this to the side or can we talk about this later? This is how I'm feeling. And sometimes those things get misconstrued and when you get so frustrated, things just roll off your tongue that you're like, oh my God, I feel bad that I said that later on. But at that given moment, you know, you're, I'm like gun ho and I'm like, yeah, I'm right, you're wrong. But those are little things that I want to work on for 2021 to get better at is being more appreciative and be more respectful of him. Um, number three is be his BFF. Be somebody that he can talk to about anything. And don't get me wrong, this isn't something I really need to work on because my husband and I are like best friends. But I feel like sometimes whenever he is talking to me about things, sometimes I tend to speak my mind into things instead of just kind of sitting there quietly. It's, I need to work on being quiet when he talks and just listen and give him that utmost attention and let him vent his frustrations for the day, whether it be work <clears throat> or something that the kids have done or something that I have done or you know, family or whatever the case may be just maybe just sitting and listening but still be his best friend at the end of the day because he is my bff and i love me sam <laughs> number four practice his love language now this is the kicker my love language is words of affirmation and acts of service so which is completely opposite of his his is physical touch and quality time so this is something that i need to work on physical touch and quality time because you know I give a lot of my time to the kids and doing things around the house where I don't have just that one-on-one -on -one time with just him 
and the physical touch, I completely suck at that. And I know there's other women out there who grew up in not such a physical touch family. So that can make it, that can make it a little frustrating, you know, cause it's like when I first met him, for example, you know, he, he took me to meet his family for the first time and they're like super huggers. And I'm like, I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, they're hugging me. I'm not used to this. What do I do? Of course, now we know we're almost six years into it and I'm a little more, um, I'm a little more acceptable to being touched. <laughs> but initially it was really, really hard because I was like, oh my God. So I'm going to work on like holding his hand more and maybe just rubbing his arm or his hair you know, or his back, like, hey, babe, can I give you a massage? Or not even ask, just start doing it just to see, you know, if that makes him happy or, you know, feed into his love language. And the quality time, we do need to set time out. And we both do as a family, put time aside for us because we're so focused on our family and our kids and cooking and cleaning and doing, you know, things that I do around the house that we don't have that intimate one-on-one -on -one time. And I'm not gonna say intimacy is like null and void because it's not, but sometimes when, you know, intimacy doesn't have to be, you know, brum, brum, brum. sometimes, you know, it's just holding one another, consoling one another, and I need to get better at that, cuddling more. Um, we used to cuddle all the time and we don't cuddle as much now, especially with, you know, the little one and being pregnant. <laughs> Number five, praise him for the things that he does. Um, I am world's worst for this. Like, you know, David will do little things and I don't, I feel like I don't give him enough praise because growing up, I wasn't given a whole lot of praise. And that's something that I have to work on and that's something that I can work on in my entire household, not just him, but this also applies to our kids and our family as well because, you know, people need praise. They need to know that, hey, you did a good job or, oh, I'm proud of you, babe, you know or good job, Kaya, you know, and that applies in all aspects of life. Um, just giving him a little bit more praise. I'd give him some, but I need to, I need to work on giving him a little bit more because I think he needs that. Number six, be his biggest cheerleader and encourage him. So I need to be better at this. I need to, you know, be that girl on the sidelines. Yeah, you got this. I got you, babe. Good job, hallelujah. I need to do that a little bit more with him. Um, Cause men love to have like a cheerleader behind the scenes that cheers them on and encourages them on day to day life. And I, don't get me wrong, I have encouraged him in more than one way. He wouldn't be who he is today if it wasn't for me because I have pushed and encouraged and, you know, really filled his ego. Like, you got this babe, you're better than this. We're gonna have more, we want more. We want more out of life and really encourage him to get that down and he's doing pretty good with that so I really don't need to work too much on that but I feel like I can encourage him a little bit more number seven accept his help um, I can't be independent all the time so I before I met David I was a single mom so it was just my son and I for the longest so I even in, even in past relationships, I always had a problem with being the dominant because it's always just been me and my son and me doing, you know, paying my bills, um, making sure I'm cooking and cleaning the house all by myself. So that that's still a transition that I'm still learning today. I'm a little bit better, but I need to be better whenever accepting his help whenever he says, hey, can I help you with something? Yeah, you sure can. Instead of being like, no, no, I got it, don't worry, I got this, I need to say, okay, yes. And then sometimes I need to ask him for help. A lot of times I don't ask him for help whenever I need help with things, and I need to get better at that too. Like, hey, babe, you know, I'm really tired today, but I would love to have your help with this, this, and this. And, you know, believe it or not, men love to know that you want them or need them or need their help. So that's something that I need to work better at as well. I might have to pause here and there because the little one. Hold that thought. Number eight, 
is compliment him and show interest. So I need to be better at complimenting him as well. And I guess that kind of falls into um, being his biggest cheerleader and encourage him. But I need to compliment him more and say, ooh, babe, you look good in that. And then, don't get me wrong, sometimes I do. I'm like, hey, I like that. It looks good on you. Mm. You know, but I need to be more like, oh, babe, look at you. Oh, oh shoot. What? <laughs> but uh he does like that and does fill his head with happiness so i need to start doing that a little bit more granted that's going to lead to other things <laughs> um and show interest like that part i need to work on a little bit more because i feel like you know being a mom my attention's like more on the kids and getting the house and stuff together so i need to show more interest in him that you know i am attracted to him and that I do love him and that I am interested in him because he is very nice to look at. So those are things that I do need to kind of pick up the pace on is showing that interest. Number nine, stop keeping count of everything he does wrong. Okay, ladies, if you're a dominant like me, you know, <laughs> that you are the world's worst at keeping track of things that somebody does not do. And I am a Gemini. I know that says a lot, but you know, we do have those flip-flop personalities sometimes. And I don't mean to, you know, but I think it's just kind of like there to my DNA born with it. But I do need to be better at like not keeping track and holding grudges. I'm the world's worst for holding grudges for things. And I have come a long way over the years, and with our relationship, I have come a long way, but there are times that I tend to hold a grudge, and I need to stop doing that and realize, hey, you know, um, every, just because he does things wrong doesn't mean that I need to point it out every single time. Maybe I need to kind of sit back and just kind of keep it to myself, and maybe let him know at a later time whenever I'm not upset but maybe not keep count of it because that's gonna just keep animosity going. And whenever we have our disputes and stuff like that, I'm, you know, sometimes I'll revert back to, oh, you did this a few months ago. And, you know, here I am telling you again. And then at that point, I feel like I'm nagging him. And that's something that I need to work on as a woman and a mother, because if I'm doing that to him, I could potentially do that to the kids. And I don't wanna do that either. All right, number 10, this is the biggest one. <clears throat> Be more godly and allow God to guide me in our relationship. Um, when we first started dating, we used to go to church all the time. And not saying that I had to physically be in church to feel God and to know him and to love him in my heart. But I feel like I, as a woman, need to be more godly. I need to start being more involved in the church or even just uh, reading the scriptures a little bit more that are towards relationship and what I should do as a wife. And there are things that I need to work on. And some of these things listed are kind of listed in the Bible, but you know, of course they're worded a little bit differently, but those are things that I need to do work on as a woman and a wife is to be more godly. and you know and ask god you know hey can you help me get through this we're having a tough time right now i'm leaning on to you to help encourage me and show me what i need to do or give me a sign how can i make this better give me the strength that i need and those are things that you know i feel like i need to implement in my life a little bit more granted you know i know he's there and i love him but sometimes i don't call on him and i need to call on him more and, you know, also if I'm calling on him, you know, I'm showing that, um, I'm showing that as a role model for my kids as well, that, hey, you can call on God or Jesus whenever you, you feel discouraged or if you feel broken or if you feel lost or vulnerable, you can call out to him to give you that strength that you need to kind of get you over that hump. All right, guys, so I hope you all like this video and have taken some of these tips into consideration in your marriage. Um, my relationship is my relationship. It's not your relationship, but you know, some of the things that we don't think 
of or things that we may be doing and you might have a perfect relationship you might have a horrible relationship and of course if you're in an abusive relationship this isn't going to work for an abusive relationship that's something that you need to venture out of and you got to know those signs for that because i've been there done that and you know no one's when to walk away is going to be your biggest cue she's getting rowdy all right so i hope you all enjoy this video and if you haven't already please like comment and subscribe and if you have any questions for me feel free to comment them in the comments below or if you have any suggestions or tips um if you got if you all have been in a marriage that's been over 20 years please give advice below not only for me but for other people that read the comments that might want tips as well for their relationship or their future relationships if they're engaged or whatnot all right guys so i hope you take care and have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon on the next video. Bye.